And does it have anything to do with diet? Well, we're still trying to figure that out. Uh, we, we think it does. We think that the Western diet uh, doesn't give us enough fiber in our diet. Enough, we're not taking in enough fiber. And perhaps that's the cause of these high pressures that mm -hmm. cause these outpouchings. But there's been some controversy about that in terms of actually what causes the diverticulosis. It's clear that we're seeing more of it uh, as time goes forward. And I suspect that diet does play a role. And probably diet, the diet that's as we that begins in childhood and as we get older continues uh, that way. We, we tend not to get enough fiber in our diet. Okay. Well, you're watching 21st Century Conversations. We're having a conversation this evening about stomach problems. We call it the GI tract problems. We have with us two doctors from Yale and from the New Haven Gastroenterology Associates. There are Dr. Myron Brand, he's a gastroenterologist, and Dr. Uh, Joanna LaSala, who is a hematologist and an oncologist, and she's with Yale Smilo Cancer Center. They're, they're very kind to join us this evening to answer many questions about problems of the GI tract. You know, starting the GI tract starts at the mouth and goes through to the colon. And Dr. Brand has been so kind to explain to us how important it is for us to keep the GI tract healthy. And Dr. La Sala, who is an oncologist, as you know, that's a cancer specialist, and she also is a specialist of the blood, who just explained to us that the human blood consists of three main parts, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. And things can go wrong. And for the next 30 minutes, I'm going to be asking both of them a lot of questions about how to prevent things from going wrong and how to fix them when they do. So thank you both for being here. And now I want to ask both of you a whole bunch of questions. So Dr. LaSalle, you were showing us before what happens with the colon when the, you find cancer. And you showed us that example of a large polyp and a small one. Now what do you do when you find these polyps that are cancerous, so, that is? So when there's a cancer, so, um, as, a, as we were saying before, a polyp could have some precancerous areas mm -hmm. and needs to come out. When there's a cancer, then before seeing me, Dr. Brand would send them to a surgeon, would send somebody to a surgeon, because the cancer needs to come out, okay? So in general, this person would undergo a surgery that takes out the cancerous part of the colon mm -hmm. and then takes out some of the lymph nodes around it. That's important information in addition to treating the cancer. So by taking out the disease, of course, everybody wants the disease out of them, but it also gives us important information about the stage of the cancer, and that helps yes. us to decide the best way to treat it. Now, you say the lymph nodes, and I think many people who watch this program, we've sort of explained lymph nodes many, many times, but tell us again, what information in terms of determining the stages of the cancer, what information do you get from the lymph nodes that you take out and test? So the lymph nodes... Yeah, we have a graphic up. Can we put that on the screen? Yes, so the lymph nodes... So the lymph nodes um, surround the colon. Yes. Okay, and if the cells from the cancer mm -hmm. that are in the colon and this shows three different size tumors. Yes, what we you see the see small one the, up to the big ones. Right, yes. and the difference in addition to the size is that those tumors are pushing through different layers of the colon wall. Ah, yes. The lymph nodes are around there and those cancer cells can spread through the lymphatic vessels and go to the lymph nodes. Uh -huh. Once the cancer cells are in the lymph nodes, they then have an ability to spread to the rest of the body. So a cancer that doesn't involve the lymph nodes is a lower risk cancer than one that does involve the lymph nodes because the lymph nodes are a portal to the rest of the body. It's a way, it's a way of those cells entering the rest of the body and then being able to spread to another organ like the liver or the lungs or the bones. I see. 
So that's why they always take lymph nodes to test them, and that will tell you if the cancer has spread, even if, even if you don't see a tumor someplace else in the body. Correct. We would still consider it a localized cancer, even if it's in the lymph nodes. But it tells us about the potential of that cancer to spread to other parts of the body. And that's a more serious situation than if the lymph nodes are negative. So when the lymph nodes are positive, that's an opportunity for us to give chemotherapy. And we say that because that person has an increased risk of that cancer going to the rest of their body, if we treat them with chemotherapy right after surgery, meaning six weeks or so after surgery, mm -hmm we would have the best chance of eradicating any microscopic disease that might be left behind. That microscopic disease, if, if it were left untreated, could go on to spread to another organ like the liver or the lungs later on. At that point, it's no longer a curable disease. I see, okay. Now, at Smilo, you see all kinds of um, patient uh, problems in terms of cancer, yeah. you see. Um, is there a specific way, for example, you said you give someone chemotherapy. How do you decide how much chemotherapy to give, how long to give the chemotherapy? Is that because of the amount of lymph nodes involved? You know, how do you know whether it's stage one, two, three, four, and how much chemotherapy to give. And can we put up Smilo's contact information, please? Okay, uh, there is a Smilo. Um, and Smilo is sort of the, the major cancer center here in New Haven, Connecticut. And we know that Smilo also draws from many, many different places. People come from, you don't have to live in New Haven to be treated at the Smilo mm -hmm. Cancer Center. Okay, so how do you decide, yes, how much chemo to give and all that? So when we give chemotherapy, the doses that we choose and the programs that we choose are based on clinical trials. So many studies have been done and patients have participated in clinical trials over many years. And some of those have been to help choose the dose or help choose the different combination of medications. So we know from studies where the effective medicines are. Now, do and we the, want to have that on the screen? So, so this is just, okay, you were so asking me about staging. Yes, stages. And, yeah, yes. so can so we, we call can, up that slide, please? Okay. So this is, it's a little bit of a busy slide. Yes. But what it shows is, in general, staging is done really quite similarly for all cancers. Okay. It's what we call the T, N, and M staging. So we look at the tumor size. Yes. Then we look at the nodal Node. status. Yes. And then we look for what we call metastatic disease. Okay. And that's disease that has spread to another organ. So that's what T, N, M means. Correct. Okay. So we start with T, and then usually there's a variety of sizes, T1, T2, T3, T4. Yes. Then we look at nodal status, and there's usually an N1, maybe an N2, and in some diseases, an N3. And then there's metastatic disease, and most and again, of the times- And again, that means it's spread. That means it's spread. Yes. And usually we have either M0 or M1. There are some more complicated staging systems for certain diseases, but in general, that's the, the way we stage really every cancer. Based on the stage, we then go on to say, if someone has, for example, stage one disease, perhaps their risk of recurrence is so low, they don't need any treatment for certain diseases. You mean you don't mean so, like chemo or anything? Correct, so for a stage one colon cancer, chemotherapy would not be necessary. Okay. But as the cancer becomes more advanced and there's lymph node involvement, let's say in stage three cancer, then we say this now is an that, opportunity. Now is that would stage three be the third one in the picture stage from left is, to right? Yes, and so that's the third one yes. here. So it's stage three. These are really any size tumor that has nodal involvement. Okay, and again, we're talking about lymph nodes. Correct. Okay. So when we see that, we say that's a higher risk for spread to the rest of the body. 
And that's our opportunity to try to treat microscopic cancer with chemotherapy and try to eradicate it. And by microscopic, you mean those cancers that you cannot see that's correct. On the screen, you don't see when you test the person, you don't see the cancer, but you know that because of the lymph node involvement, you know that the cancer has spread to other places, even though you don't see them. Correct. And the chemotherapy is intended to find these cancers and kill them. Exactly.